night, they roam the streets of America, looking for a place to sleep. Tonight, they found a car park. They join many others of the half-homeless, as they're known in America, those people forced to sleep in their cars or in cheap motels after having been evicted from their homes. No one has counted how many Americans are currently living like this, but during the month we spent inside the American crisis, we met hundreds. The majority are from the middle class, the class that for decades had been the embodiment of the American dream. All right, Katie. It's time for night. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. Good morning, I'm David Green. There's bad news on the jobs front today. The unemployment rate inched up to 8.2%. This is the third straight month of slumping jobs numbers, and it comes just as the presidential race is heating up. You're tired? Yes, I'm tired. Seeing as my feet are tired, let's put it that way. All things. I'm Larry Dodson. I work for Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. I'm 52 years old and I live with my wife and two children in a uh, motel room in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, and I have five children. retail management and the jobs no longer exist, the companies no longer exist. So that was something that concerned me, was job security. Just three years ago, Larry Dodson managed a large customer service department. He lost his job and then his house. Since then, he has rented a room in one of the motels along the highway to Disney World. It costs $149 a week to stay here, and I clear about $228 a week. At least about 70 bucks for groceries, food, anything else you need, clothing, that type of thing. This is the living room, bedroom, <laughs> dining room. <laughs> right over here, we got the two beds. I have the built-in closet there. The four of them live in this room with the few possessions they were able to save the day of their eviction. And basically, my son who's at work right now and uh, my daughter who goes to school, Sandra. 
Hi. Hello. <laughs> we're crowded. We get on each other's nerves. And like I said, as to getting out of here, we're not sure when that will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it all depends on whether we can uh, start getting some extra money coming in. So that one of these could get a little more hours and uh, we can start to uh, save some money to have the, the rent for like a first month and security deposit. You want your wheat bread with some miracle whip band? Yes, please. Oh, this internet's not working. I know, it hasn't worked all day. It's got four bars, shows it again. We're not kidding anything. I wanted to do. Nope. <laughs> That's my uh, name tag. Are you proud of it? Yeah, I am proud of my name tag. Uh, Why? It's, uh, yeah. I got the little tag on the bottom because I've started a new role. So to let the guests know that I'm not normally in that position, they tell me I'm earning my ears. So, <laughs> I thought I had big enough ears as it was. Yeah. <laughs> How long before there would be a uh, good There's re regular races. I started out at 740, and I've gotten to, I think, 820 in two and a half years. Yeah. It's not... No, that's not the greatest, but uh, uh, that's about the way it is uh, anywhere. 900 families now live in the cheap motels that surround the Florida theme park. At one time, these motels were filled with tourists, but now they lodge those who are no longer able to afford their own homes. The managers sometimes seem like slumlords exploiting families in poverty. We could only find one who was willing to talk to us. What I'm doing now is totaling up my daily sales for the day. They collected them rent today only five hundred and thirty-two dollars and what is it? Thirty-four cents. And that's all I collected today in in rent. And you were supposed to collect how much? You should be able to collect anywhere from wow. Let's say about two thousand a week. You should. That's four times what she is currently getting a week. And every week she has to evict customers that haven't paid their rent. Even in a hotel right now, it's hard for people to pay their rent. With the economy the way it is, and then companies don't want to pay you nothing but minimum wage. It's not easy. Right now, you're breaking even. Just walking around with him, trying to put him to sleep. Yes. <laughs> he ain't going no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in this room here, they have been here for a little over a year and a half. It's like a permanent residence. It's their home. Two years. He's been here a year and a half. This one, a little over a year and a half. So, there's no more rooms. The United States is the one that's supposed to be one of the richest countries in the world. And they can't, it's, it's an embarrassment to say that we have this many homeless people. But here in the last two, maybe three years, it's, it's just widespread. It just hit so hard to now that you can't hide it. And it's not just families, you got older people that can't go anywhere. You got seniors that's living in, they're walking up and down that street out there every day, don't have somewhere to go. I, for example, I have one in my room right now. She's, she has nowhere to go. Shirley opened her home to this woman who had previously been a paying guest at the motel. Without anywhere to stay for five days, she was sleeping on the side of the road. She's 67 years old. 
day that she came back, which was Tuesday, her legs was so burned from her sitting at the bus stop all day long. Yeah, the sun's so hot. And then I'd walk around during the daytime and try to stay in the shade, but it's hard, you know, and to find the shady spots. Sometimes they can be on that side of the street, then they'll be on this side of the street. It, it, it can happen to anyone. Me, myself, I worked in the fields and I became a, a store clerk. I stepped up, but it took me a long time to step up. I'm 53 years old. I, I have no retirement. I have no benefits. I have nothing. So it's, I'm still, I, I assume I'm going to end up like her one day too. She done worked hard. And what she got? Nothing. She have nothing. Yeah. Something is broken. Mm -hmm. All we can say is, unless Greece really blows up and causes a problem around the world, it isn't going to get a lot better than that, people. So if you want to refi, do it. It's been 287 days since the U.S. lost its top credit rating. What do we as well as part of the discovery? Among the evidence are the first, uh, the first photos of the neighborhood watchman after the shooting. In the one-star category, Shirley's Motel is highly sought after. The rent is $800 a month, and the majority of residents are from the middle class. Yep. Should I put it on top of the hill again? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Daddy, you want to see if you can make one in the... Uh... I already did. Okay, take two steps back. I saw one of those... Would you, uh, could you imagine him, like, playing golf in a place? <laughs> <laughs> it lets me know what I need to fix on my swing. Yeah. Salt Lake, I played at Hidden Valley Country Club. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> My name is Terry. I'm 42 years old. I'm a consultant for a resort in Orlando. I've lived with my wife and six children at this motel for a little over two years now. Before becoming half homeless, Terry lived what he now calls his other life as a sales manager in the car industry. He was doing well until he was made redundant. He did not receive any compensation, as these are not mandatory in the United States. <laughs> I don't know if there are classes anymore in America. Well, when the market burst and people found out that their houses were not worth what they thought they were, jobs disappeared, the illusion of security and stability weren't right with it. Ladies! Can, can I have a small spoon? No, this is not no, bam, bam, you, you're going to have part. Thank you. That is mozzarella. What the what? I guess you need to learn. Come on. The family spent all of its savings on hotel rooms. Until six months ago, when Terry managed to find a part time job in a hotel complex for $8 an hour. Forced to sell his car because he couldn't afford to pay for petrol or insurance, he now takes the bus to and from work. I've definitely seen both sides of the spectrum. We had a boat to water ski, we went skiing, went on vacations. It was consumerism at its finest. I guess the 1950s stereotype of America. <clears throat> the white picket fence, mom and dad. 
know, we grew up, you had the same job, you worked there all your life, you retired, they took care of you. Those days are gone. Eighteen hundred children are currently growing up in the motels that surround Disney World. The school bus has had to change its route to come and collect the children, known in the school system as the Disney Motel Kids. They move from school to school as their parents are forced to find cheaper and cheaper accommodation. In the hope of avoiding this kind of instability, Terry's wife decided to homeschool her four eldest children. The cards need to stay over here. Why don't you put them on the table for me? So, if you're telling me that you read the book but you can't remember? I forget, Mommy. So let's not forget. Mm -hmm. How about you actually read the book? Hmm? You've been to five different schools. One within this school district. The only thing that would make us better would be having social friends. What social friends? Friends to talk to at lunch. Hmm? Friends to talk at lunch. Oh, and recess? Yeah, people to play with. I think that they were ashamed because we were living in a hotel. But then we found out that there's other people living in a hotel. And so, at least along the strip, it sure seems to be the normal. 13-year-old Ryan went through what all motel kids dread when he was placed in a foster family. At the time, his family was roaming from motel to motel in their car. Relations between Terry and his wife had become strained with the pressure and eventually they were judged economically incapable of raising their six children. The three eldest were placed in care. I do my best to try and make sure it's not hard on them. I try to keep everything on me because I'm the big brother. Is it hard on you? Yeah, but if it's not on, hard on me, who's it going to be hard on, my mom or my sisters? I mean, being the big brother, when my dad's at work, it feels like I'm the man of the house now, so I have to do this, get that done, bathe the pets, do the dishes and all that. But yeah, staying inside gives you lots of time to just think. And you, what do you dream of you know, when you sleep at night? And you just sleep? mostly nightmares and stuff. Yeah, just dreaming of how we got taken into foster care and all that. That all the stress is going to make my mom and dad lose their temper or something and we might get taken away and I'm, I don't want to get separated from my family. Not again. With them all playing together, it just fills me up. Go ahead. Go ahead and play. The parents have to accept that for the moment there is no support or help for them. During the weeks we spent with these families, we only came across one social worker in the county, and she was supposed to be monitoring around 1,800 children. Age 30, Terry's wife gave up work so she could take care of their six children. But last year, she began looking for work again in every restaurant in the area. So now, every night after dinner with the children, she works in a restaurant opposite the motel. Her pay varies. If there are no customers, she gets to go home early, but her pockets will be empty. Uh, 
next round of pills. It's almost never been used in this way. As I thank God at night that we're okay. spend a few nights in a van. That wasn't fun. No. Oklahoma in the winter. That got chilly. And you think you're safe from that happening again? No. I don't you're, think you're, you're ever going to be safe. I think out of the last seven families to move out of here, one went into a house. And they only lasted in the house three months, and they're living out of their vehicle now. Shelters here are always to capacity, and during the summer, a lot of them close, and there is no safety net for poor, like they say there is. It doesn't exist. Without any safety net to catch these people as their situations worsen, those that no longer have the means to pay for their motel will go from half homeless to completely homeless. They often then migrate to the states where the social services still have a minimal presence. California is the most popular destination. Go get your bucket, sweetheart. Okay. You walk away from us. Mommy will change you in the car. I'm Amber. I'm 21. I live in San Diego, California. I have two beautiful children, one year old and a three year old. And we've been in our car for four months here in San Diego. Amber and her husband used to work in a hotel in Las Vegas. When they lost their jobs, they came to California to try their luck. They tried all the shelters, but no one could house them. Their move had been in vain. Next time, won't you sing with me? Say one. Two. Yay! Good job. There was no other option. There was no one who could uh, house us and I wanted, we wanted to stay together. I didn't expect it to last long, I, two months tops. Mm. Look, Katie, remember that day for the yeah. first time? Dad and mommy and dad and Katie and sister and mommy. <laughs> 10 days ago, her husband found a job on the other side of the United States. Their father is working in Kentucky. Uh, he just wasn't getting uh, any jobs here, and he'll be sending money whenever he gets paid. And uh, also, he'll be saving up money so when, when his job is done, he can come back and we can get a place. Amber's husband crossed the country alone by bus. They knew that their old car wouldn't last the 3,000 kilometer journey. sleep on the streets by the dozens. For the last 
Last year, a charity has organized this car park so that those who have managed to keep their cars can stay here at night. We saw similar things all along the West Coast, the last refuge of these desperate people who are flocking to California. This car park in San Diego, lent by a church, opens every day at 6 p.m. Nancy Vera, a volunteer, spends the night here three times a week. We had like a nurse at one point, we had a teacher, we had a dental hygienist, you know, and so she was, I mean, they were used to making good money, like they were used to being comfortable. So that's why I say we do get some first time homeless and we don't have as many people moving out. So it's full, definitely. So we try to kind of work with what we have. Alrighty, I'm gonna start. Are you gonna park here? I'm going to go do this car and get those kids out. Kadian, stay in the car. Okay. It's like a mountain. Come here. Let me put your helmet on. Be careful. There are 20 parking spots, but about 30 cars squeeze in. The occupants must leave by 6 a.m., the majority heading to their place of work or to look for work. Hey, how was your day? Good day. So what you do? Got some resumes out today and, and works positive, hopefully. I got a college degree business administration and hotel restaurant management, but this is my studio on wheels. Studio on wheels, here we go. <laughs> the reality doesn't really set in. Right. It's, it's like, wow, I actually don't have a home to go to. Where's mom and dad? And mom and dad are, you know, maybe alive, but they're not in the same city. So, yeah. you know, and your, fr your friends, your dear friends that will help you out, you can go take a shower maybe at your friend's house, but you feel kind of obligated, you know, I mean, every day, I mean, every other day, you know. It's hard to, I have a hard time asking if I can get clean. And I'm a pretty go-getter guy. I've worked since I was 14 years old. I'm like 52 now and coming in May. I'm thinking about retiring, but I don't know if there's going to be anything left, you know. Mm. I'm probably too young. They say 62 to 65 to 60, you know, 70, but it's just there's so many people in this situation that it's just, it's not really, the statistics aren't there. I'm saying it's kind of a hidden thing, and I don't know why the government doesn't attack it or look at it. I'm uh, fortifying the car. Yes. So I get privacy. Here. If you want to see how our bed is, it's like it's my own cave in there, pretty much. It's time for Nana, okay? Yes, I, you, I'll take you to the park tomorrow, I promise. Someone do lights out in a little bit, okay? okay yeah. Do you think you need a few minutes? Um, no, I just got to get in with them. And okay, sounds good. Yeah, so. Good night. Thank good you. night, thank you. Get on in there, girlfriend. I know you do. Yeah. 
Wheat is the bug side. Mm -hmm. No! No! God damn it! Hey, don't you say those words. Men of the Lord just helped us tonight. You don't have to do that. We're not a daddy anymore. Hey. We only. We'll get a house, and uh, she will sleep in a real bed in her <laughs> own room one day. We're not happy anymore. No, no, no. I love you a lot. Thanks. But I want you to sit down because mommy's going in to fill out applications and I don't need you to be running around the hotel because they won't hire me. Come on. Please don't. Me not tired. Me not tired. Kaden, you have to be good for me. I'm trying to get a job. You understand me? They're not going to hire me if they think my kids are rambunctious. I was wondering if you were hiring or accepting applications. Uh, so the people walk in there, they have a list of, a list of the posted positions and applications. Okay, thank you. Come on, Katie. This is a hotel. Did you poop? <laughs> Wonderful. Cassidy, come here. Cassidy, stop. Touching stuff. Sorry about that. She's fine. Okay, look, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't do it. Get the keys, come on. Because yeah. I have to deal with both of my children while I'm trying to fill out job applications and it's just not possible. They're very happy when they get out, but soon after they get out, they have to get back in. And uh, that's very hard.
A few years ago, these fields were full of horses. 3,000 kilometers from California, Kentucky was the capital of horse racing in the United States. The economic crisis hit the owners hard, and now the fields are practically deserted. Those who can afford to try to maintain their farms in a decent state. And that is what brought Amber's husband, Daniel, so far from his family. Yeah, pretty lonely out there in the farm. It's the only outlet. <laughs> Yeah. You've been in touch with uh, Amber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Send her pictures, show the kids, especially the horses and the ponies and whatnot. She likes, she just giggles. Little baby girl, she's Katie. She just giggles about everything. She's a sweetheart. Just six months ago, Daniel Carter was employed in a hotel in Las Vegas. Today, he repairs fences, going from farm to farm for 10 hours a day. His boss calls him at night to let him know whether he's needed the next day. <laughs> oh, he's a good worker. Yeah. His worth is just unreal for a young man. Yeah. Man, I don't know how many weeds he cut. I mean, it was, he just kept getting it, boy, I'm telling you. I'd like to find about four or five like him that's got his worth ethic. Boy, that's all he talks about, some little kids he is. Yeah. So, he, so you know that one day he's going to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't blame him. No. Not a bit, no, sir. Your family comes first, and everything else just gets there when it can. Well, that's y'all's old text messages. It's one that I had three. Torture being away from the little girls. The blonde hair, blue eyes, gorgeous little things. I can't help but come out here and work for them. So, you know, it was rough out there when we were, you know, just looking at them every day and not being able to find work out there. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was hard just to sit there. Can't sit, not make nothing happen. Stuck in the house for four days. This is the awesomeness. Chris's bed, my bed. Got the shower right there. That's a, that's a winner. We built that ourselves, you know. Amber. You all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Okay, well I can't wait to come see y'all. Love you very much. You gonna let me talk to my baby girl here in a second? Yeah, you can talk to her. Katie. Hey, baby girl. I love you. I love you too, sweetie. I'm coming to see you. Yes, yes. Daddy misses you. I love you. Okay, you be sweet. All right, bye. Hey, I gotta stay strong for the kids, because you're supposed to be a rock. <laughs> no choice. Uh, uh, like I said, just, just just being able to work. I don't care what it is. I'm doing weed eating. I don't care. Working with horses. I don't care. Doing all these fences. Just I just don't care what it is. I go pick up dog poop. I wouldn't care. <laughs> um, I just like I, said, I keep saying, it's just a blessing to be able to work. Cause there's a lot of people out there that can't find jobs or. Forget your pride and. I mean, it's not oh, you gotta swallow that down. Those aren't enough days for a pride. <laughs> I don't even. What's that word mean? <laughs> not to Google that later. Uh, no, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. You gotta just just nod your head. And, yes, sir. You know, just do.
Just be and act. I'll be there you know, like a block away. I hear little babies in the background. No. Hey, Nancy. <laughs> oh, you look fresh. <laughs> uh, it's great. There's lots of work out there. Okay. Yeah, good. just to stay motivated. And, yeah. 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 I think the girls are resting. Um, Cassidy was sleeping or something. Mm -hmm. And then Amber's over there. Oh, no, so they're up now. Yeah, they're up. <laughs> hey, girl! Hi, baby! Hi, baby! Hey, sweetie. Give me a kissy? Hey, mwah! Hey! Hi! Daddy! Hey, girl! Come here. Hey. Hey, Amber, give me a hug. Oh. What do you think, girl? Owie. Owie? Oh, yeah. She's way more vocal. This one's walking, standing, no problem. Yeah. How's it all going for you as far as uh, looking for work? No. Uh, looking for work, not so good. Not uh, so good. Had the interview, and uh, nobody called me back. Right. I left a message. Yeah. Did you, ch you check out that studio yet? said that uh, he's looking for a male because there's already a male living in the apartment. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, again, again, again. Well, we'll just be here a little bit. Daddy wanted to spend some time with you at the beach for us after you move back to work. Was Cassidy? No, Cassidy. Cassidy. Katie, don't grab her. You know, the water comes in there. <laughs> 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 They'll be told about it, but I mean, just that mommy and daddy were struggling um, and that we moved out to California and we continued to struggle for a little bit, but we got our minds right, got on the right track, and here we are today. Hopefully. Hopefully everything will still be great when, uh, when, when we tell them. After this reunion, Daniel went back to Kentucky for work. One month later, he sent us some great news. Amber and the girls had at last found a place in a shelter. We were supposed to go and find them to see how they were doing and to wrap up our investigation into America in crisis. And then everything fell apart. A 39-year-old Bourbon County man who police say was brutally attacked by a man with a hatchet last night has died. The man police have charged with the brutal attack is Daniel Carter. He told LEX 18 he was acting in self-defense. Daniel says that one night a man who lived in another caravan near his 
came at him with a post and attacked him. He maintains that the man was drunk and ready to kill him. Daniel took a hatchet and fatally struck the other man. According to Daniel, it was the only way to save his life. Two witnesses support his story. He's awaiting trial in a detention center in Kentucky. We were able to meet with him on the condition that he didn't talk about what had happened. Have you had a chance to talk to Amber and to the... Yeah, I just I just called him today. You know, she she's always says I miss you and I hope to see you soon. And it's just just worrying about them and worrying about their safety and and and, and just you know worrying about Amber and and because this guy is gonna be double hard on her now. And uh, you know, bless her heart. I mean, she uh, she she's being really positive and really strong, and that's helping me be really positive and really strong. So, but. There's not much of a positive spin I can put on this, um, besides the fact that it, it it helps me, gives me time to think and, and realize, you know, how much I do care for my family and and uh, how much of a blessing it is to actually be in the same area. Um, yeah, like I guess I'd rather be poor with him in my lap, man. I, this is this is ridiculous, you know. Uh, living in this shelter with her daughters when she learnt of Daniel's arrest. She had just found a room in a hotel for four months in the hope of using the stability to find work and somewhere to live. It's there that we met her two months after the last weekend she spent with her husband. They need to be happy and be kids, and they don't need to know bad things. No, I, I try to keep my emotions shut until they're asleep. If the economy was better and one of us found work here, everything would have been avoided. Everything. Uh, you know, it's a pretty big tragedy that all this happened. The car was supposed to be the low point, and, uh, but now this, this is pretty much the low point of him being in jail and away from the kids. It's hard for them, the kids, because Katie and asks, where's daddy, where's daddy? He's at work. I have to remind her. I have to remind her of how good a man he is because he's not here to show her. I just wish that everybody else w would know that and see that he's a good man. It's just things happen. Things happen to everybody. Um, I don't know what else to say about it.
If the jury believes his self-defense theory, Daniel Carter will be freed immediately. Otherwise, he may spend the rest of his life in prison. Back in Florida, Larry keeps on waiting for a promotion that would allow his family to finally leave the motel. Terry and his wife will soon have enough savings to rent a studio in Orlando, where they plan to move into after Christmas. They firmly believe that they will be able to work their way up again, and that one day the American dream will live again. <laughs>